Thank you so much for joining us for the program today, Faith for Every Nation. Today you're going to get to hear my dad speak about faith, holding fast to your confession of faith. So if you need to hear more about that, I encourage you to tune in, keep listening, keep watching. It is going to help you in your faith and it's going to encourage you to hold fast to your confession of faith. Let's get right into the message. It's now time for Mark Hankins, Faith for Every Nation. Mark and Trina train and equip leaders in every nation through church services, leadership conferences, mission trips, and media. Get ready for a direct and joyful message about how to grow in your faith and learn more about who you are in Christ. Now, let's join Mark and Trina. So your faith is based on what? Number one, accurate knowledge. Okay. And some people do have some knowledge, but it is limited. So your faith cannot function further than you know. Or as Dad Hagen said, the Lord told him, he said, you do believe as far as you know. So in other words, he said, I'm going to show you some things that will add to your faith or bring your faith into a higher function. Revelation knowledge. <laughs> Amen. So one of my favorite stories comes from, uh, what was it 1947 uh, after World War II and a test pilot by the name of Chuck Yeager. Now, if you've got my Spirit of Faith book, it's in there, maybe in one of the other books. But Chuck Yeager, we were just in West Virginia preaching at Chuck Yeager. Uh, well, we're preaching at a town close by and, and uh, in what is in uh, Charleston, West Virginia, Chuck Yeager uh, airport. They named it after him because he lives around there. Chuck Yeager is the first man to break the sound barrier as far as we know, unless Elijah did it when he outran the king's chariot. So <laughs> as far as we know, <laughs> where'd that guy go? I hear the sound of abundance of rain. So or unless Brother Jester did it when he was running around the church. I think he might have done it, right? He took off. Amen. So Chuck Yeager, first man, and the sound barrier is at 700 miles an hour approximately. So he's a test pilot. So uh, right after World War II, then we're in a, in a, a race for outer space to uh, send a man to the moon because whoever develops that technology will also develop the military uh, knowledge and the weaponry and everything which will give you superior advantage to any enemy. So you cannot send a man to the moon if you cannot break the sound barrier. <laughs> so they didn't know much about what the sound barrier actually was. They just call it flying supersonic, 700 miles an hour. And so they tried to get some test pilots that would, uh, that would um, try it. So they asked each one of them, will you, be the, will you fly it? Will you be the first one? And everybody was afraid because they call it the great unknown. And everybody was afraid. So they had all these different theories. Whoever breaks the sound barrier first, well, they're going to disintegrate because no man's ever gone that fast. All the equipment disintegrates. So they have all these. They just didn't know. Nobody had ever done it before. So all these people, pilots are wanting, you know, big bonuses and stuff. So will you fly? Well, you have to give me at least $100,000, you know. And so they asked Chuck Yeager, would you do it? He said, oh, yeah, I'll do it. And they said, well, how much, how much do you want? He said, you don't have to give me nothing. You're already paying me. You know, he's flying for the Air Force. Well, he, well who knows? He's probably making what? hundred dollars a month or something. So he said, oh, you don't have to pay me nothing. <clears throat> so they put him in the X one, then take him up with a bigger jet, drop him off, you know, at about what, 40,000 feet or something like that. And he'd fire up the X one rocket 
And when he'd fire that thing up, then he would take off. And when he'd start getting up to 600 miles an hour, then he'd get up to 650 and the thing would start to rattle and shake so violently that he'd have to come down and land it. And um, then they would do adjustments on the wings and different parts of that jet to try to get it to fly 700 miles an hour. So after some adjustment trips, how many of you ever needed some adjustment trips? So after some adjustment trips, then the day that he was going to go back up, he had been riding his horse and he's riding his horse and, and got and fell off his horse, broke his ribs. So he didn't tell them that he just broke his ribs, but he knew that if he told them they wouldn't let him fly, they, uh, he also knew that if he got in the cockpit of that X-1, he wouldn't be able to close the door down because he had broken ribs. So he had him cut him a broomstick, half cut it, cut it off. And then when he got in, then he put that in there and forced the door down. And so on the day that he broke the sound barrier, that day, <laughs> took off. 600 miles an hour, got up to 650, it got up close to 700, and it started rattling and shaking again. He said, but I'm not, I'm not backing down today. I'm going to break this barrier today. So, boom, he did. And he's like, wow, I'm flying supersonic, first man ever. So, he's going over 700 miles an hour. Well, what he didn't know, nobody else knew, there was a sonic boom when you fly, you break the sound barrier. So they thought he was dead. So they're like, all right, another test pilot's dead, so who's going to go tell the family? <laughs> and so while they're waiting to see if he's dead or not, you know, and they go tell the family, then they see him circling around. They're like, ah, he's still alive. <laughs> they didn't know that <laughs> they thought he had exploded or something. <laughs> and Chuck Yeager's been collecting off of that <laughs> since 1947. See, if you demand to get paid up front, you end up with nothing. <laughs> but if you're not afraid to take the risk, you could get paid for the rest of your life. <laughs> so, when he broke the sound barrier, they asked him, what was it like? And he said, it was like sipping lemonade on the front porch. In other words, the thing everybody was afraid of was like sipping lemonade on the front porch. He said, because the real barrier was not in the sky. It was in the knowledge of supersonic flight. So whatever barrier you're facing, the real barrier is not what it, you think it is what you're facing right now. The real barrier is knowledge of the law of faith. And once you have revelation knowledge of how the word works, you'll break that barrier. And the reason that you're rattling and shaking sometimes is because the devil knows if you ever break Mach 1, you're going to break Mach 2 and Mach 3 and Mach 4. <laughs> So the same Chuck Yeager that went Mach 1 is the same one that went Mach 2. Mach 3. Are y'all still with me here? And so there's certain financial barriers. Come on. Ministry barriers. And you get to that place where you're like, I can't get beyond this place right here. But God wants to let you know you can break that barrier through faith in God and faith in the blood of Jesus. That means you can go places you've never been before. You can receive things you've never had before. Matter of fact, God said, don't even remember the former thing. I'm going to do a new thing, something that's never happened in your life, if you'll dare to believe God and dare to speak the Word of God. That's the spirit of faith. Come on, even if you're wounded, get your broomstick, baby, and lock it down. Say, so we're fixing to fly. <laughs> and so in your knowledge, you can go as far as your faith can take you. And your faith cannot take you further than your knowledge. So when you think you already know about something, then you settle for mental assent, which is not revelation knowledge. 
Whoa, are y'all still here? I said mental assent. It sounds a little like faith. It just won't produce results. Oh, let's try this out of here. So somebody, yeah, I know that subject. I know that. And they'll, and they'll sound just like they got it. Come on now. But, but if you throw them in the deep end, they'll be making swimming motions, but they're still sinking. But if you'll dare to re-examine this revelation of what Christ has done for you with his blood, then he says your faith can produce greater results in you than you have ever known. Praise the Lord. Go ahead and laugh at the devil. <laughs> Go ahead and laugh at the devil. <laughs> Come on, the mountain can't get no bigger, but you can sure get smarter. Come on, whatever you're facing in your life that has seemed to block you and limit you, because if you can believe, all things are possible to him that believes. I believe and I speak. So when, when I told my wife, I'm not getting that, I said, I already know about that. Now I can look back and see where my problem was. Is I just thought I was smarter than I really was. So when you refuse to re-examine a subject, or you listen like you already know what they're talking about. All right, let's try that again. Come on, you don't receive the word appropriately. In other words, how you receive the word is going to determine how your faith is going to work. James said, receive with meekness. And then he said, for that word to work, it's going to have to be engrafted. Paul said in 1 Thessalonians, he said, you receive the word, not like a man was talking to you, but like it is the word of God. And that word works mightily and effectually in you that believe. Now, here's what Paul said. And I've got to give you this. First Corinthians, what is it? Three, um, five and six around there. Paul said, I planted Apollos water and God gave the increase. First Peter, what is it? Three, five, six? I'm sorry. First Corinthians is what I'm trying to say. Three, five, and six. First Corinthians, three, five, and six. Did they throw it up here? Hey, yeah, I got it. First Corinthians, three, six. Praise the Lord. Paul said, I planted, Apollos watered, and God gave the increase. All right, now I got this straight from Dad Hagen. And I, I mean, I've got messages from Dad Hagen from probably the 70s or something. And some of them I, ha I have listened to a <laughs> hundred times. And sometimes a hundred times I go, now, how come I didn't hear that? One? I don't know. So here's the way Dad Hagen said it. He said, Paul said, I planted Paul's water. God gave the increase. So he said this, he asked the Lord why some people don't get increase or don't get results. And the Lord said, because they reject the watering process. Aha. Uh -huh. So here's what he said. He said, the Lord told him the first time you hear the word and you get revelation knowledge, you get real excited. You're like, wow, look at that. Woo, man, yeah. that's great. He said, the first time you hear it, and he said, that is the planting process. He said, but the second time, third time, 10th time, 100th time that you hear that word, that's the watering process. He said, and a lot of people get thrilled on the planting of the word the first time they hear a scripture and get revelation. He said, but then when there's repetition of that word, they reject the watering process. 
So he said, no matter how good the seed is and no matter how good the ground is, if it's not watered, it will never increase. So you can have good seed, come on, and you can be good ground. But if you reject the watering process, so he said the watering process is the repetition of revelation. The repetition of the word, hearing and hearing the word of God, the repetition of that word. He said, because Paul and Apollos preached the same message because Apollos was trained by Paul. So they preached the same gospel, and the first time they heard it was what? Planting. And Paulus came and did the repetition. <laughs> Matter of fact, the Apostle Paul's most successful missionary journey was a repetition. His second missionary journey, repetition. In other words, they heard the word, and I'm going back again to see how they're doing, and that's when Paul wrote most of his letters. In other words, sometimes people have heard the word, but Paul said, I'm going to go see how they're doing with that word. In other words, in the repetition of the word, the watering process now increases. And God wants us to increase, but in any area of the word, whether it's healing, come on, finances, identification, or victory, there must be the planting and the watering and the repetition. <laughs> oh. Years ago when we moved, the home we live in now, we've been living there for 35 years or something like that, long time. And so when we first moved there, then I put in a driveway, concrete driveway. And so then, then I put, I had dirt around it because we're kind of a little bit on the hill. So I put dirt around the driveway. And so, uh, well, it rains a lot in Louisiana, so every time it rains, water's come down the driveway, washing out all the dirt. So I need some grass on the dirt. So guess what I did? Well, I said, well, I'm going to get me some, some of that sod, you know, and have them just lay it out like carpet. Well, then I checked the price. And I'm like, I, I ain't getting no sod. I mean, it's all I can do just to live in this house right now. I, got, I can't afford no sod. So then I thought, well, I'm going to have to plant some grass, so uh, I'm going to have to go get me some seed. So I asked around, and I said, what's the best seed, the most, you know, the, the most uh, durable, you know? And so a guy told me, well, centipede grass. That's the best grass, most durable. And I said, all right. So I said, do you have any bags of centipede seed. So, yes, we do have some bags. So I said, well, show me one. So it's a little bag about this big. Right. Little bag, little bag. It's got little tiny seeds in there. You're like, what? And it costs $40. <laughs> well, that's like 35 years ago. I was like, $40? $40? Are you crazy? $40? Oh, God. So I just had to start confessing. I'm well able to afford grass. <laughs> I mean, because I'm just like, I just, I'm just going to leave the dirt there and keep replacing the dirt. I don't have $40 for centipede grass. Can't we get something cheaper? Yeah, crab grass. Well, so no, we want some pretty grass. So I get this bag. All right. What about a sprinkler system? Can't afford that. Water hose with a little... <laughs> I am the sprinkler system. So then we got the dirt. So then it said on the bag, you need to, you know, ruffle up the dirt some, you know, dig a little around in there and then just sprinkle the centipede seed out there. And then you need to water it every morning and every evening. I'm like, water it every morning, every evening. Lord. I don't want to spend no more money, so it's just me and a water hose. All right? And so I was planting my seed, got it out there, and the seed was so little, you couldn't even hardly see it. So I put it in there, scuffed it around, and so 
you know, my friend was probably laughing at me, you know. I got my little seed out there. And so, so then I water it. I water in the morning, water in the evening, water in the morning, water in the evening. Matter of fact, sometimes I'd forget and go to bed, but I had $40 invested. <laughs> Man, I'd get out of bed, put on my pants. <laughs> I'd go out there and get that water hose at midnight. I'm like, I'm watering the morning. I'm watering the evening. All right. I did this like for two months. And I, crabgrass. So I'm like, well, I can get crabgrass free. That's all I'm seeing. So I'm looking down. So I finally get me like a, you know, a magnifying glass. Where's my centipede grass? Where's the seed at? No evidence. I water in the morning, I water in the evening. Finally, I thought, this just is not working. So I went and got the bag, the original bag out. $40, so I'm keeping the bag. So I got the instruction. I read it again. And here's, here's, when I read it again, I saw something. I saw something that I didn't see before. And it said, do not expect quick results. <laughs> I'm like, well, what can I expect? So I'm reading further. I was reading down. It said, uh, probably nothing will happen for at least three months. Three months. Three months. And then it said, matter of fact, crabgrass and weeds will grow first. <laughs> then it said, after four months, if you will get a magnifying glass, you might see a little bit. Wow, man. I'm like, wow. Wow, $40. Centipede seed. Well, I can't afford to quit now. So I'm back out there in the morning. I'm in the morning, in the evening. Get out of bed. Get out of bed. Get out of bed. Go. You got to water. Finally. I got a man. I said, I see one. I see one. Look at that. Come here, Trina. Look at that. That's a centipede grass right there. She said, where? I said, right there. Six months later, you could see little tiny sprouts come up. Tough grass. Jesus said the kingdom of God works like a seed. Let's try this out again. Most people say, I planned on Sunday. I hadn't seen nothing by Friday. I'm quitting. No, no. You got to water it. Water it in the morning. Water it in the afternoon. Water it in the morning. Water it in the afternoon. If you go to bed and you forget to water it, you say, I got $40 in this, baby. I'm getting back up. I'm going to water that seed. So if you wonder why some people never get increase. Or they don't get results. What's going on? They reject the watering process. In other words, I receive the word. And there's some things in faith you can receive instantly. But there's other things in faith that there's a spiritual law involved and there's a process involved. And you just stick with it. You're watching Mark Hankins Ministries Faith for Every Nation. Did you know the simplest definition of faith is acting like the Bible is true? The moment you act on the Word of God, God makes Himself responsible for your results. The spirit of faith will ignite the call of God on your life. In this book, Faith Opens the Door to the Supernatural, you'll learn how believing and speaking opens the door to the supernatural in your life. The spirit of faith will take the victim out of your voice and put victory in your voice. The spirit of faith opens the door to the supernatural, enables you to receive from God and fulfill your divine destiny. The moment you act on the word of God, God makes himself responsible for your results. The spirit of faith will ignite the call of God on your life. 
In the Spirit of Faith book, Mark Hankins shares valuable truths such as how to win the war of words. The simplest definition of faith is acting like the Bible is true. Faith is an act. Never run at your giant with your mouth shut. The Spirit of Faith is a pioneer spirit. It enables you to advance, break barriers, and go into new territory. The good news is, when you receive the Word of God, your faith can grow, and nothing is impossible. Lift your voice and open the door to the supernatural in any situation you're going through. When you order this special faith package, your gift of $25 or more will help Mark and Trina Hankins train pastors around the world. Order today by calling 318-767-2001 or visit markhankins.org. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope that you enjoyed that word on faith, holding fast to your confession of faith. I don't know about you, but I've been in a tough spot where I have been challenged in my faith and I'm wondering, okay, what am I going to do right now? Am I going to hold fast to what I believe and I know it's true from the Word of God and from what I have been taught? Or am I going to listen to doctors or circumstances or whatever it is that may be screaming? And so I have been in that position and I know you may be in that position today too. So I encourage you to hold fast to your confession of faith. Listen to this message. Listen to it over and over. And if you need more encouragement, I want you to get faith opens the door to the supernatural. This will help you to hold fast to your confession of faith. When you're feeling weary, when you're feeling like giving up, maybe circumstances aren't lining up with what you've been believing God for. I want you to keep holding on. When you've done all to stand, what are we supposed to do? stand. You just keep standing. This teaching and this book will help you to do just that. Thank you so much for joining us today, and we'll see you next time. The Mark Hankins Ministries app makes it easy for you to watch the latest TV broadcast. Listen to unlimited full sermons by Mark and Trina. Read our daily devotional and stay connected with upcoming events. Download the app today on any smart device. Simply search Mark Hankins Ministries. Start feeding your faith at any time and anywhere. Join Mark and Trina Hankins for an hour of powerful teaching live Monday through Friday on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Everyone can join In Christ Bible School. Catch the spirit of faith and move the mountains in your life. Watch live wherever you are and learn who you are in Christ. That's live at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Thank you for watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. For more information on how to build your faith, visit markhankins.org. You can access many free word resources to help you find who you are in Christ. Stay connected with us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.